Welcome to Empire Building, the podcast where we talk about building big businesses and even bigger lives. I'm your co-host, Via Williams. I'm Wendy Papazan. And I'm Seychelle Van Poole. You know, many of you have probably heard the quote, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, which is a quote by Jim Rohn, um, or maybe the quote of show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And yes, there is some truth to that. And as an entrepreneur, you often start with one set of friends who like you, support you, know you're great, maybe even have known you since childhood or university. Um, And then you have this thing that happens in your life and you decide to become an entrepreneur or a business owner or maybe even an empire builder. And so I want you to take a second for me. I want you to close your eyes. If you're driving, don't do that. But as long as you're not driving, close your eyes for me. And I want you to imagine or this operating scenario. other kinds of heavy machinery. Yeah, or like, yeah, if so you're like a riding lawnmower, do that, don't so do that good, too. Well, all, our, our, all our forklift <laughs> operators out there. Yeah. Yes. Don't operator. close your eyes if you're moving with a forklift right now. Um, and so I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine this scenario. You're starting out in a new business and you're super excited about it. Um, you're learning all the things and if you're like the, you know, four of us here on this podcast, you jump in like wholehearted, you're in, you jump all in and you're learning as you're doing and as you're growing. And what happens with that is you are pouring your heart and soul into this company. You're learning your craft. You're probably working long hours. You're probably not going to the happy hours or the dinner parties that you used to when you worked maybe like a nine to five job because you had time after work and you're just pouring your heart and soul into it. And you love what you're doing, so you do more of it because you love it. Um, And all of a sudden, you can open your eyes now without noticing Your friends fill the time that they were spending with you at happy hours and with dinners with other people. They reach out less, they start focusing on other people more, and then one day we wake up and our circle of friends is much smaller than it originally was. And I'll be honest, personally, that stings when that happens and it sometimes really hurts um, when you realize that the relationships that you've held really closely all of a sudden aren't there in the same capacity that they were before. And so then you start to look to replace those relationships with other people, which presents a whole other set of opportunities and challenges. And oftentimes, you know, we as empire builders don't even realize that this is happening because we are so busy working and building and doing that this happens slowly and then it happens suddenly. Yeah, that's so true, Se- Seychelle. And I, I don't even know that the that there's a, a, a turning point or a, yeah. a place where there's a there's a sting. It's really you just look up of all of a sudden you're like, wow, I'm I'm pretty lonely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I found yeah. I've mourned like I personally have mourned for like friendships that have gone like either to a much more distant relationship or a much lesser relationship and it wasn't my choice if you what I mean like my actions were my choice but it wasn't a conscious choice and like I have found myself especially over the last couple of years really mourning some of those relationships that I wasn't intentional about keeping or getting rid of Um, and I think as empire builders that happen that can happen a lot I mean, yeah, um, I think you guys know know this story. A few people know it. Um, and I, I hesitated sharing it because, you know, so I'm going to I'm going to be vague because I want to protect, yeah. you know, something still in progress. But I have been um, hanging out with a group of incredibly wonderful women for uh, about 19 or 20 years. We've, we've mm-hmm. been meeting monthly. It, it kind of died down, honestly, to be like sure. quarterly a couple times a year. But very, very close knit group of women who've gone through, you know, babies, pregnancies, divorces, um, marriages, you know, cancer, All the things. right? Yeah. E- everything, yeah. And, um, you know, I, um, I have devoted the last few seasons of my life have been more heavy, you know, heavily focused mm-hmm. on on um, my career and wealth building and and I'm enjoying that. Yeah. So I don't want to make it sound like I'm yeah. uh it, but it's you're doing it cuz you love it. It's not a begrudging. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. It's a it's a it's, yeah. it is a new new de- it's a departure. It has been a departure for me mm-hmm. though. Like just to, to paint a an objective picture and I was crushed about 6 months ago when I got onto uh, social media. And every single one of them except me had um, claimed that it was a reunion, that they were getting together. 
and um, you know that they were celebrating um, you know getting together again and you know I wasn't there I wasn't invited and and I couldn't pinpoint um, the moment mm-hmm. th- th- that that anything happened and and it was sure. um, it, it was it was really upsetting and and then you know I had to ask myself a whole bunch of questions like is this yeah. my fault is this their fault is this a good thing is this a bad thing you uh-huh. know how do I feel about you know friendships having seasons and I didn't think th- it, it you know it, it opened up a lot of things and I have been yeah. thinking pretty pretty consistently I've been thinking on this topic the last six months because of that just you know yeah friendships and seasons and all of the things we're gonna we're gonna talk about so um it's a really real topic for me right now and you know I have Mm -hmm. a very rich life and I love my life and I'm proud of my decisions they were the right decisions for me and you know I didn't feel like I had sacrificed a lot by this change of lifestyle and I probably had I probably had sacrificed more than I realized yeah yeah yeah, well, and and with good reason. And I totally, um, yeah, I love that story because it it completely resonates with me mm-hmm. and some of the friend groups I've had in the past. So I understand yeah. that. Yeah, social media is rough for that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and there's good reason to keep your friendships. I mean, uh, according mm-hmm. to the Mayo Clinic, good friends are good for your health. Uh, obviously, friends can help you celebrate good times, but but they're also there for you when you're having struggles. They prevent isolation yeah. and loneliness, which has been so important these last two years. And they can increase your sense of belonging, help you with self-confidence, uh, help you cope with trauma, such as divorce, serious illness. And and honestly, it's one of the, um, I think a statistic I read is that the best thing uh, a man can do to increase how long he lives is to get married because mm-hmm. relationships yeah, are good good too. for good for life and uh, mm-hmm. men in particular uh struggle with this kind of leadership yeah. lonely so yeah for sure you know uh friends also play a significant role in our physical health believe it or not, not just physical mm-hmm. but our overall health right yeah. so um, you know, adults that have a lot of friends, there's a lot of research that shows they have a reduced risk for a lot of health problems, which is kind of wild if you think mm. about it. You know, health problems like depression, high blood pressure, um, unhealthy BMI. I, I was laughing earlier, it didn't work with me, but <laughs> we are getting there again, <laughs> ladies. Um, but, but you know, You're adults that Come have <laughs> a meaningful relationships to, um, to Wendy's point, have, adults who have meaningful relationships and social support are likely to live longer than their peers, right? And, um, and and there tends to be a correlation with life longevity and the number of social connections mm-hmm. you have. Yeah, well, and if you I, read that book, that. Uh, yeah. The Five Regrets of the Dying by Bronnie mm-hmm. Ware, yeah. which I, I reference a lot. A long time I think ago. It's, yeah, well, I think it's a good, it's just a good reference point for your life because she was a palliative nurse, mm-hmm. which is a nurse that stays with people as they're dying. And then she, she um, had conversations with people and asked them what their regrets were. And um, one of their top regrets is, I wish I had worked less and I wish yeah. I had spent more time with the people that mattered the most to me. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's it. That is, that's people on their deathbed telling you how to have a good life. And uh, of course, we all love to work. And at the same time, we need to figure out a way to have those relationships because they literally will make us better, live longer and be healthier. I love that. Well, I I think this is the perfect intro in for what we're talking about today, right? And that is, we're gonna walk through some tips that the four of us um, are, are experiencing, are currently in the middle of have experienced, as far as some great tactical tips on how to maintain and grow healthy friendships as an empire builder. Um, and so we have five of them for you. And the, and the first one I'll jump right in with y'all is to take inventory and acknowledge where you are. And I think you heard all three of us on the pod here today talk about how a lot of times this this position you end up in, because you've been working your buns off for years um, and hours and hours and weeks and months, you you don't have like this conscious moment where you say, I'm going to stop 
and take inventory of where I am and the people in my life and the ones that I really want to be intentional with um, spending time with. And so this is like a note to myself, but I think it's a note to all of us to say, you know, take take a minute in the next week and write down, you know, your top five, 10, 20 people, whether they're family members, friends, neighbors, um, business partners, write down the people that are the most important to you in your world, spouse, right, kids, and write them down. And then I want you to go and take stock of like, how much time are you actually getting with each of them? Are you getting any time with each of them? And do they know how important they are to you in that? Yeah. I love that, Seychelle. One of the things that Jay and I did is when the when the one thing came out, we, we mm-hmm. actually did something similar to this. And a lot of people have done this during the pandemic. They've really yeah. pared their life down and found yeah. it to be worthwhile and beneficial for them to do less and go deeper. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, part of the problem, I think, uh, it, with social media is is we see everybody's highlights. And so we see everyone yeah. out there having fun. We're sitting at home scrolling through Instagram where tomorrow we might be out with friends, right? And, mm-hmm. and, and that group might be seeing that. But there's always this sort of like FOMO that goes on. Yeah. But if you can do what Seychelles is doing and pair your life down and really think about the people that are very important to you and you know I know via that for you you've got you know you've got two sons one who just Mm -hmm. recently went to college and Mm -hmm. and uh, one who's about to go away to college and and it's it's okay to say you know what these these I'm going to focus on my kids these next uh, few years and um, and to the detriment of some of your friendships Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and that, that is what happened to me and you know when I was reflecting in fact that's number two it's funny that yeah. we're kind of, mm-hmm. this is perfect transition. Um, mm-hmm. And number two is time block and tackle, right? So go through mm-hmm. your calendar, protect space for your friends and your calendar. So look at that and be sure that you're putting in time for them and that you work around that, you know, not mm-hmm. fitting them in because you'll never fit them in, right? Mm-hmm. Be sure that you're, you know, purposefully and mindfully showing up and, and being intentional about, you know, the friends that you want to spend time with and how you're showing up for them. But to Wendy's point, um, that that was part of my reflection, Wendy, over the last few months that I, you know, it's been a lot of work and a lot of family. And um, mm-hmm. that that has not sucked for me, right? I, yeah. I um, I'm not trying to say, I, I have, I have a lot of friend groups. I'm just one of those people, um, to your point, that has yeah. a smaller groups and, and deep relationships. And and when it when it came to time blocking and time tackling, I had to like face in the mirror. I had to look at myself in the mirror and say I was not putting right. them in the calendar. And it was yeah. feeling like a little bit. It it wasn't coming naturally to do that. And so you have to ask yourself, you know, is this does this feel like a chore or does this feel joyful? Mm-hmm. Oh, I love and those that. Are, and so we usually shove those to the side and we don't answer them mm-hmm. and they just don't go on the calendar. And then one day you wake up and on social media, your friends are oh, having yeah. a reunion and you feel rejected. And yet who rejected who? Right. Right. Mm. Yeah. 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 So you know, true. Well, I'm curious. What are your what are your what what is your time blocks for for you, Seychelle? Like who 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 have you put in your uh, calendar? Um, well, I can tell you one of, um, obviously, like outside of marriage and family. No, no, um, no. I mean, all of that. I'm of curious okay, about so, it all. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, obviously, Nick is first and foremost on there. We've got, um, we had a date this week. We've got another one next Friday for our wedding anniversary. Um, and we took a walk this morning together. So we have usually two or three times a week after we drop Quinn off at school, we're doing a walk in the morning together. And then a date night each week. And then... Um, Quinn, I have blocked on my calendar for time after school and we go do like a mom daughter dates. We did like crepes this week. Um, and so we have like special things that we go do. Um, one of the things via when you were talking about that's been most top of mind for me is with my dad and memory care, we have to time block to go see him and mm-hmm. lunchtime is the best time to go see him. So at least a couple times a week, it's about two times a week right now. I'm going to visit him at memory care and because he was so good at investing in his relationships he's had since he's been in now like eight to ten visitors that have Mm -hmm. scheduled lunch for Mm -hmm. him to come see him and so Mm -hmm. i was thinking about that like you know at the beginning and the end that time blocking shows back up um Mm -hmm. so that was really cool um and then my mom now lives a half mile away so i see her more in 30 minute chunks which is cool and then when you get into relationships um I have a girlfriend, Laura, who we've been best friends with since sixth grade. 
Um, and we at least once a month are having like a long, she's in Austin actually. And so we have a long chat and we have like several kind of lifelong friends like that, whether it's couple friends or single friends that we work to get at least once a quarter to try to see them in person. Uh, but they live all over the country. Um, and there's, I would say there's, Nick has like 11 on his side and I probably have six on my side that are that. And then our dolls, right? Like our dolls and our tribe. But it's, yeah. it, it's like, as I think about it, it's the ones that I didn't purposefully intentionally do. Like I have a girlfriend from college that I kind of mourned, like you were saying, via the loss of that relationship over the last couple of years. And it's someone I love deeply, but we just, I grew and she grew and we just grew in different directions and that's okay. Um, but it was a very slowly and then suddenly. It was, there wasn't like a lot of recognition around it. So that happens too. How about y'all? Sorry, it's probably more um, information than you wanted, but. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Well, Sorry. I'm just curious about some little tactical things. Like, yeah. um, you know, the one thing that you can do is, which is number three on our list, which is to double up on your time. Yeah. And uh, so I do a walk and talk with my friend mm-hmm. Jenny every Saturday. Yeah. You guys mm-hmm. know her, love her. Shout out to Jenny. I did. Um, Shout out to Jenny. And I've done, I've been a Jenny. Jenny substitute. I've done the Jenny walk yes. with, with Wendy. The, I did the same. Yes. Sorry, Jenny, yeah. just one time. Yes. One time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, so I can visualize great, it when you, I see your pictures. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. So you can get a walk in. You could talk uh, and kind of catch up. And honestly, it's such a highlight for me. Uh, the other thing that we've done during the pandemic, which has been great, is we started a family Zoom. So Jay's family, uh, so his parents, his sister and her husband, and then uh, their two daughters and their son all get on Zoom along with my dad. So my dad joins oh, in, and awesome. uh, there's a whole bunch of us uh, for you know 30 to 45 minutes on Sunday evening. And honestly, it's been so great. It's just a, a placeholder. We get to see everybody's face. We get to catch up. We get to find out about how the weather is in northern Minnesota from my dad. And the rest of us feel really good about the weather where we're at. And um, <laughs> It's just really fun. So, yeah. So there's lots of ways that you can double up on your time. That's a huge gift, too, I think, that COVID has given us in getting more creative with how we're connecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yep. Yeah. And there's other ways to double up in your time. So, like, for instance, you could travel with friends, Mm -hmm. right? I know a lot of people that do that. We don't typically do that. I do that with the dolls. We enjoy that. Um, You could do a book club. That's a great way to get all your friends together. Um, you can have a play date. I mean, mm-hmm. raise your hand if you had a if you've had a play date and really yeah. enjoyed the time with the other mother. Yeah, um, yeah. So the, just other things, dinners out with multiple people, uh, lots of ways to double up. I know for us, having dinner together as a family is really important, mm-hmm. and we've really prioritized that over the years. And uh, you know, so we're eating and talking and catching up from our day over dinner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that, you know, from, I love walk and talks um, a lot, Mm -hmm. but I think that it's this kind of, is about time block and tackle, I guess, more than anything, but um, I do have- I love this new phrase of yours. When did this, I've never heard this, time time blocking and time tackling. I I haven't, it's, Seychelles wrote it, (laughs) not me. Thank you. Oh, it's so great. (laughs) Oh, it's so good. Yeah, so so smart. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, oh, No, it wasn't me, I can't take credit. No, (laughs) I thought it was a DHB or something of yours. It is now, it is now. But I, Oh, um, so, sorry, not to have a segue, but you know, But we're gonna have a segue. Yeah. Bia's younger brother, I messed mm-hmm. it up. I thought it was your older brother. I got in trouble for that. But uh, Paul came came to talk to my team. He was so nice to come and talk to my team. And he, you know what he talked what? about? What? His DHBs. I know. Aww. That's a family thing. Deeply held It's a family everybody. thing. I got it from yeah. my dad. Oh. Yeah, I quote. Yeah. I I yeah. Like, at a certain Dora. point, I stopped saying this is from my dad because I was saying it so much, right? But yeah. DHBs, yeah. we all talk about DHBs. I love that. That's like our thing. That's, That's like really our cool. family lingo. I thought it but, was cool. I, mean, I was like, oh, <coughs> I know what a DHB is. <laughs> yeah, it's, I know. Of course. I, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. I um, I have like all these groups of friends. You know, I am. A, Wendy and I have had long talks about this. Like I am a tribal person. You know, I think yes, some are. people are and some people aren't. And I, I have like my college friends who I love. I have my childhood friends. I just have all these groups. And so one of the things that, that I've noticed in my life is that, you know, friendships go in seasons. And I know we're going to talk about that a little bit. But 
I think that when you have young kids, like at home and at school, you're you're kind of in a season where a lot of your friends are your kids, the kids, other m- moms and dads, you know. Mm-hmm. And so it Big is time. easy mm-hmm. to double up, and we do that a lot in our neighborhood. I have a great neighborhood friend group. I have so much fun with them. So we can all have dinner together, two or three families, and the kids are involved, but they're kind of on a you know hangout they don't call them play dates anymore when they get in middle school right it's called hangout or the moms can have some wine time (laughs) you know (laughs) the girls are putting on makeup or like whatever they're doing so we do a lot of that now I find and it's really really fun and and I think that um I've noticed my kids love it that I Zoe loves it that I'm hanging out like with the cool mom like she thinks like okay my mom's cool she's hanging out with the other moms and the other moms were like this is cool that they think this is cool because we're having (laughs) blast so you know we do double up like that a lot i think that's awesome um yeah yeah. and it's i think it's it's a way too to celebrate the seasons that you're in in life and and to take advantage of those so that's awesome um number four is the flip side of this which is um that we are right here right now giving you permission to let go of the relationships that no longer serve your life anymore and if you're making that list of your top 10 or 20 people in your life at the, be- at the very beginning of this episode and you're reflecting and you're all of a sudden realizing that there are some people that used to be on that list that aren't on that list anymore, we want to give you permission to um, love them from a distance. It doesn't mean you have to just like, you know, bash the relationship, but it's okay to, to have some people that you're just not as close with anymore and that that over time kind of fades away. And I know we've all had situations where that's happened. Just happened, as I said. Yeah. 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 Well, and it goes back to this this idea of focus and priorities, which we talk Mm -hmm. about here. You know, you can't do it all, have it all or know it all. Mm -hmm. And that includes your relationships. You literally just cannot have all the relationships. And so Mm -hmm. it's really about looking at uh, everything and realizing like, hey, every yes is a no to everything else. And so if you're going out and, um, you know, socializing every evening that's probably a no to tucking your kids into bed or yeah you know whatever that looks like for you so it's just a reminder we don't Mm -hmm. even though we think we can have it all know it all and do it all we just we really can't and that's Mm -hmm. just truly a recipe for burnout Mm -hmm. and you know I think in doing inventory on this Nick and I have like done this a couple times in the last few years and uh, there were some relationships that he was ready to let go of that I wasn't ready to let go of yet Mm. or vice versa And um, it was a really interesting transition to be able to like talk as a couple around like why the other one of us felt strongly about why this relationship was or was not serving us and what we were getting out of it and what we felt like we were contributing towards it. And um, it was really interesting that we become much more on the same page about some of those relationships staying in or out um, and and being more focused with our time with it. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's something too, where my ego was still very tied into those relationships and wanting them to be there and having to let that go and really look at it from a different perspective. Um, and that was, it was super humbling and, and a really good exercise for us. So if you have a partner too, I think it's a good exercise for a date night conversation to be able to look at your list together and see what that looks like too. That's smart. Yeah. And you said something earlier about, you know, be careful to not burn everything down. Yeah. And, you know, keep the friendships that can go the distance Mm -hmm. and also kind of bring in those seasonal friends. And I think that's where it is confusing. I don't know that I even have an answer, you know, to share with everybody today, because I, again, not, you know, to keep going back to my story, that's been my question. Like, well, are they, you know, I thought they were the lifers. Like I thought, right. And maybe they are. Maybe this is, you know, yeah. And and it's tough, too, because if you have two people in a relationship, like I'm just having some ah ahas here Mm -hmm. where, you know, I'm more of I love meeting. One of the things I love about being in real estate is I literally love to meet a stranger and get their story. Like I've just always loved that about real estate. And that's why I don't like to necessarily go to big parties, but I love a dinner party because I get to sit down Mm -hmm. next to someone and I get to really go deep with them. And I'm really I'm really good at it. I'm a really good listener in the moment. And I'm genuinely curious about that person and their story. Like there's nothing, like I went to an amazing dinner party on Wednesday and it was just a reminder for me. And uh, Jay doesn't always do that. I mean, he is, Mm -hmm. he's also a great listener, but he's just more selective with his relationships. Mm -hmm. And so he tends to hang on to these older relationships, which, you know, it's his choice whether they're serving him or not. And, um, Mm -hmm. And it's it's just interesting because 
I, I, not that I'm always top grading because that's not true. I have a lot of really long term friends. Uh, but I, I just love the idea of maybe meeting someone new and getting to know them. And Jay would prefer to just sort of stay with mm. the tried and true. So there's, I think there's comfort with those older relationships too. Like you've, mm-hmm. there's a, there's a shared history. You've grown up together. Mm-hmm. There's, you can talk non-verbally so much, you know? And so it's like, you're not, you're not having to start over and put that energy, that intensive energy into the beginning of the relationship yeah. that takes so yeah. much time. Um, and there's that, I think too, like, you know, we talk about like when you get older and you've been together as a couple, you can have that like non-verbal communication for hours. Right. And it's, you're in the same room, even maybe doing something together, but you don't have to have that like verbal. And Jay is such a deep thinker. I could see where that makes sense. Yeah. And I mean, that does bring us into number five really well, which is to thin the trees and, you Mm -hmm. know, find the holes when you thin the trees and plant new Mm -hmm. seeds. And, and Seychelles did this episode and I, I read this for the first time. I was like, Ooh, you have me reading this one? Like, wow. Cause that's really deep. And th- that, that's a really <laughs> you are deep a deep concept. person, Via. Oh, well, usually we give you all the shallow stuff. I know, Via. I know. That's not what I meant at all. Friends, friends. <laughs> Sarah, Seychelles and I have a separate chat I know. where we're we like, Oh my God, chat. that this Dia is idea. not smart yeah. enough. If that is not smart enough shallow. for her. Yeah. Like no, right. switch her name around on that one you really should have that chat actually but no no but I mean I because I'm going through it like I'm literally you you know to use the same analogy I'm in the weeds right now with this right analogy like pun intended and so you're you know the concept here is when a forest is thinned out new life you know plants and trees can begin to grow you can have a little space for interesting people you meet at really cool dinner parties Mm -hmm. and you know you 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 never want to let go of that that aspect of your life where you are seeking new relationships and friendships Mm -hmm. because that's part of the beauty and mystery of life right Mm -hmm. and so um you know if you're so full and i have and i'm visualizing some people that are so full and so scheduled out i don't think they do have room for you know fantastic phenomenal new friendships right i mean they they don't even know's out there yet the forest is so dense and the trees are so packed in there there's literally no room for light yeah for and you know, it makes me think of um, actually our event, Her Best Life. It makes me think mm-hmm. about how, you know, if you can carve just enough space, you know, the women who walk in that room are like, I need, you know, there, there's a pie yes. wedge. There's a pie wedge here <laughs> that I need to fill with um, food analogy. That's what I'm good for. <laughs> I'm good for the food analogy. <laughs> but, you know, there's a pie wedge here that, that, lunch I wanna, time. <laughs> I know, that I want to fill with, you know, these new With a nice slice of cheddar cheese on top of the pie. Mm, yum. Mm. Reminds mm. Me what of kind of pie are we eating? Are we eating quiche? Apple, apple pie, of course. Apple, with apple, cheese. apple pie. With, with cheddar apple pie with cheese? Oh, the sharp cheddar. It's so good. I mean, I do love Seychelles. green apples with cheddar, but I've never had yeah. apple pie yeah. with cheddar. So can, can you, you melt ma- the cheese? Oh. Realize that? Or is it cold? Okay, think yeah. about yeah. how you put like sweet, Melting. you know, sweet pepper chili and stuff on, you know, on cheese. Yeah. yeah how yeah. you put like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Think it's about like that. It. It's like that. It has yeah. to be really sharp yeah. cheddar. My yes, mind yes, yes. is blown right this now. This is what Just new like friends do. This is exactly what you. And, and this is what we never have known about this. <laughs> yeah. And and just to recap, this is what friendships are like for your life. It's like having a slice of apple pie warmed up with cheddar cheese. Via is the it. sharp That's, cheddar on top. Yeah, you are sharp. You are. No, what? You're, you're, the, are. you're the spice. Yeah, you are the spice. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Well, guys, today was so good. Um, we learned the five ways to maintain healthy friendships as an empire builder, which is Take inventory and acknowledge who are the top people in your life, and you might do some sifting and winnowing there. And then time block and time tackle. Go through your calendar and make space for the people that matter most. Trust me, guys, this is a habit you will Mm -hmm. never regret. If you need to, if you're crunched for time like the rest of us, double up on your time. Do walk and talks, have a book club, whatever that looks like. Give yourself permission to let go of the relationships that are no longer serving you, and then thin the trees, find the holes, and plant new seeds. Seychelle, brilliant episode. Thank you so much. We all needed to hear this. So you guys go out there, uh, build a big business, build big relationships, and an even bigger life. Bye. Bye, guys.